Ladies and gentlemen, gather around for a unique look into the world of custom motorcycling. We've gathered some of the industry's top builders and fabricators on this stage to show you their skills live and in person. Watch as they chop, grind, and weld their creations into existence right before your very eyes. Feel free to ask questions at any time directly to your host, Pat Jansen. The doors to the shop are open, so pull up a stool, kick back, and welcome to the Grease and Gears Garage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last day at Leesburg Bike Fest. Progressive Motorcycle Insurance has been gracious enough to bring Grease and Gears Garage to you. Uh, a lot of folks are always curious, if you haven't seen us before, what's Grease and Gears Garage all about? We're just a bunch of mechanics that travel around the country with some... Uh, tools here on stage. We, we're into custom motorcycles. Most of us own custom shops, build custom motorcycles. Then we invite our friends up that are also custom motorcycle builders involved in the industry to show you one thing that we typically do in our shops on a day in, day out basis. You know, something very common to customize in a motorcycle. We hope to entertain, but more than that, to inspire you to be able to go back and actually try to do some stuff. Uh, to your own motorcycle, regardless of whether you're riding a dirt bike, a Harley, a BMW, a Honda, whatever it is, something you're going to be able to see here today is going to be able to help you do that. We Facebook Live all of our segments, and so what that means is, is that it's an archived uh, amount of information for you. You can go to our YouTube uh, channel, uh, Grease Gears Garage, and you can see us uh, narrow gas tanks, build Springer front ends, build complete frames, make uh, tanks from totally scratch, do all it. the kinds of stuff that custom yeah, motorcycle right. guys do. Uh, so make yourself available to that. You can check us out at Cycle Source yeah, Magazine yeah. as well. And uh, But again, we thank uh, Progressive Motorcycle Insurance for inviting us to be with them at four rallies this year, maybe even five as we, as we move through the rally season. So check us out here. Give Progressive MC some love on social media. Uh, let them know that you appreciate all of their involvement and the uh, investment that they're making here and their partners like Castrol Oil and those kind of folks. So what we're doing today is Progressive Motorcycle Insurance has also asked Grease and Gears Garage this season, over four shows, to build them a custom motorcycle. And they gave us some parameters, as customers are wont to do. Uh, so we're kind of building it a little bit to their specifications. They wanted something that was light and nimble. They wanted something that was a little more flat tracky than Cafe Racer. Uh, and so us being Harley guys, there were a lot of things we could have done. Uh, we could have gra like grabbed a brand new Indian Scout like the one that Progressive Motorcycle Insurance has given away. You can see their girls in register for that. But what we chose to do and what they chose to have us do was to find an older uh, Harley Sportster and to use that platform to build this custom motorcycle. So that's what we're doing. My shop out in Iowa, Sin Central Garage, our tagline is Resurrected Hot Rods, Harleys, and Hellions. And so we really, that's this excites me is to take something that I picked this up uh, for us at a Harley dealership here in Florida uh, last week. To take something that most people would have looked at and said, wow, that's pretty beat. I don't know that there's much more life left in that. And to be able to then give it new life is pretty exciting to me. So uh, we're going to be resurrecting this thing as a tracker. Chris Callen, my partner in crime with Grease Gears Garage, and of course the owner and editor of Cycle Source Magazine, uh, is going to tell us now, Chris, what are we doing today? The fun part. This is, this is the fun part. This is, uh, this is where we get into how you can how you can have cool stuff on the cheap. So we're starting off with a relatively in inexpensive motorcycle. You know, a lot of people today are looking for a way for that outreach and they're all talking about how to engage the young people in motorcycling. And really it's the same today as it's ever been. It starts with a Make, cheap running Making motorcycle. something they can afford to ride, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's, that's basically what we're doing with this. We picked up an, a reasonable 2001 883 motorcycle we're going to tear this thing down, go over the motor real quick, do a top end freshen up. We have a couple tricks that we're going to do with the frame for this thing. If I can get the video booth to throw up the, the Pro Tracker rendition, that's what we're calling this bike is a Pro Tracker. We're going to go with the Tracker style, which is sort of like the flat track hooligan motorcycles that are racing. Um, we're going to address this section of the frame. Let me get you out of the way for one second, RJ. Boo, this section, section of the frame, like basically when we do our customs, a lot of the stuff we do is based off of a hardtail design, which takes this section out and drives this line straight back. This particular build is going to continue to have suspension. So 
We're going to uh, drop this, do a drop seat design on it. We're going to drop this section of the frame in. I'll be right back. Are you gonna, okay, you'll be right back. So what he's talking about here is typically, you know, we, we're chopper guys, so we're going to cut everything up. We're going to cut the back end off the bike. We're going to put a rigid frame on it, either from Voodoo Vintage or Lead Sled Customs or something like that. Um, because making your own is silly if you can get one affordably from those guys already. So anyway, we're going to do something like that. But uh, this one, Progressive specifically wanted this to have suspension uh, so that when, when they have their guys riding it up uh, in the mountains and stuff, that they can really get into those no, curves and whatnot. And, of course, we think you can do that on a rigid, but not many people like that. So there, there's a cat named Jeff Cochran who's been Kay. doing this to soft tails. And uh, so he's got already oh, got man. this. You know what, dude? Just kill that monitor. He's already got the uh, project set up. He's already got products set up to do that drop seat. But we're going to be—he's going to be developing a new product for Progressive Motorcycle Insurance that nobody's ever seen before. Do these Sportsters? So he and Will Ramsey are getting together. Well, I don't know if Jeff knew that until right now, but well, yeah, <laughs> we so, talked. Well, He—he's he, kind of mastered the drop seat when it comes to the four-speed shovel head. So. I called Jeff and asked if we could get some pointers and stuff, and we are going to be spending some time with Will to get up there and, and try so to dial this in based on his design. Because this is going to be a one-off bike for sure. This is <laughs> truly going to be a custom bike with this frame. It's going to get it down a little lower and uh, get that uh, center of gravity tucked down really low so that when you're getting into it, it's going to be really nice to ride. Of course, the first step in doing any uh, custom motorcycle when you got a donor bike you got to disassemble the thing. Yesterday, uh, here at Leesburg Bike Fest, you would have enjoyed being here with the Grease and Gears Garage crew if you've got a narrow glide uh, bike or a, or a sportster in general, an older sportster. Because as we were tearing some of the stuff off the bike, Chris was just I'm throwing it tired. off the stage. <laughs> what? I'm getting tired. I know. You can't. You can't. We're not, we're not at that age where we can run up and down those stairs all the time, Chris. So, so anyway, anyway we're disassembling it. Back, back to what we were saying, the, the basis of this, as long as you have a running, functioning motorcycle, that's the most important thing whenever you're looking for a donor. So we look for stuff that we know we're not going to have trouble with. We know that in spite of the fact that we got a little head leak going on here, some of the hardware is a little hokey. We're going to get rid of that stuff, freshen up the top end, put some new gaskets in it. We got a good solid bike to start with. Other than that, it's a pretty ugly motorcycle, so yesterday, Bill Dodge shaved some legs for us already. We got some different wheels on it. We're gonna go with matching 19 inch wheels front and back. Old, like vintage race style Firestone tires. And by the time we get this drop seat section in, it'll give a nice lower rider stance. We can get rid of this Hokie Sportster tank and get something custom on there. You know, with that bigger back wheel, we'll get a little tiny tracker style fender on the back. It's gonna change the whole look of the bike. Put some uh, aggressive pro taper handlebars on the front, all of a sudden we're right into that tracker look. Well, you know, and, and Chris, you and I talk all the time about the fact that we need to start getting people uh, into more affordable motorcycles, custom f motorcycles. So you can start off by getting an old sports and just riding it around. And uh, like one of these wheels, we're putting the same, we're putting two front wheels on the thing, 19 inches. One of them you got off eBay. Yeah. And the other one I had sitting in my shop. So... You know, you can, we love, that's choppers. We love the idea of being able to take stuff and reuse it. You know, that most people would have discarded. Yeah. You can take it, freshen it up, and use it. I mean, hey, it. listen, I want, I want to have the option of going out and buying a two or $3,000 Olin's front end. And, you know, but the, the truth is we have uh, the guys from Suspension Technologies are going to come, and they're going to take our already existing, now customized front end on this bike, and they're, they're building us a cartridge system to go in the front of it. So as far as, far as performance <coughs> goes, there we have the front end that we've already come right. with the motorcycle, made the investment of doing a little custom work on it. And, you know, for short money, we'll have a performance front and end. And investigate that kind of stuff when you're getting ready to do your bike. Suspension Technologies is a, is a part of a company here called Yelvington Design that's actually a Florida company. They're just a couple hours south of here, uh, Let me down grab just those south other of Tampa. Shots, Pat. And they're, uh, it, it, they'll build you custom length suspension, but they've got a product line that exists already. Drop-in cartridges are going to eliminate your springs uh, and, and really most of the oil 
that you put in the front end. And they've got a great set. Uh, they got great sets of shocks for the rear uh, that are designed based on NASCAR that. technology. Uh, the guy that down there, Mike, that's doing that, comes out of NASCAR and drag racing. So uh, it's affordable. For you guys, it's even local. You can go right down there and talk to those cats. And this really guy, nice. as far as performance shocks, this guy is making a really, really righteous product for, for good money. He's got a set up with this set of 12-inch shocks that are going to go on the back of this motorcycle. They're in design right now with our cartridges for the front. So for comparably dirt cheap investment, we're going to have a real good suspension. We're, go we're going to have the same suspension that a lot of guys are going to spend five grand on for, for a lot less than that. For around a, uh, a grand, we're going to be able to do this bike. So it's well worth uh, sneaking around and looking for some of those companies that might just be hidden to you otherwise. Might have to let the air out. I got a tool for that. So throughout Dust, the week, we've had a pretty. Got, uh, Dust, got Dusty Pine and Chuck Robinson and a bunch of good guys on Facebook Live watching us right now. These guys are going to learn something. They won't have to. They won't have to keep building all those ugly bikes they build. Now they can build some nice bikes. I like Dusty Pine. I don't even know who that guy is. <laughs> Sounds like a weed that grows. No, I was just kidding, Dusty. Man, he's a good guy. I, th I thought it was one of those high-profile pharmaceuticals. Randy uh, Wagner's looking for some rims for his, what, what's he got, Heather? A 78 FXE, if anybody's holding. Chopper swapper, cycle dope. Chopper swapper, cycle dope. Or DM me. I might have some stuff. That's what all the kids say today. DM me. I got, I'm like a CIA agent. I have somebody talking in my ear from the production trailer. This is a new thing. For me with Grease and Gears Garage, so I have a hard time when she's talking to me not answering her questions that she's asking me instead of answering them internally. Yeah, Heather's just telling me one of the Ten Commandments of motorcycles is you never get rid of parts. Somebody's going to need them or you're going to be able to cut them up and use them later. Now, Chris, how far down do you think we'll get this bike today? What's up? How far down are we taking this bike today? Are we doing the whole thing? We're, we're going to knock the whole rear section off. So we're, gonna, we're actually going to install the shocks. We're going to get rid of the rear fender and everything together, all together. We're going to get rid of the wiring. We're going to get rid of the tank. We're going to knock off all the handlebar stuff so we can get a look at what our, our concept versus our actual rolling chassis, right what on. our lines are like. Uh, Jeff Greer, we did not have to do any drilling to make the. We won't have to do to make the 19-inch rear Actually, wheel. Actually, we will in the back. In the back, we yeah. will. Yeah, in the, in the back, we'll have to drill and tap it out to take the uh, to take the sprocket because obviously these. 19 oh, I see what he's asking. Front, okay, yeah. yeah. In order to in order to receive the sprocket, yeah, we'll we'll change that around because we're we're converting this to a chain. Yep. So so it'll get that flavor done to it. That's not that big a deal. I mean, if you're not used to doing that kind of thing, you can always take it to a local machine shop. They get excited about doing that kind of stuff. They'll knock it out. That's super easy for them. But um, Barry, Barry Wardlaw was up here yesterday from Accurate Engineering, and he said the best thing about it. He said, you know, all of this stuff, no matter if you're doing the engine work, the tranny work, fabrication, it all comes down to problem solving. So if you have a good set of problem solving tools, which are all up here, you're good. Now, I'll tell you what, it, too, if you're looking at doing this kind of stuff, they're not a sponsor of ours or anything else. But if you, Chris, if you run into Rebel Gears out of Tennessee, no. if you use them, those guys will make you, they did this for my Royal Enfield build, uh, those guys will make you custom sprockets and actually with a built-in offset for you and everything, whatever oh, yeah. you need, with the right size for everything. I think they built me a sprocket and an inch and three-quarter inch offset out of aluminum. And I think they charged me like $175 to do it and had it done in a week. So You know, I'm, a, I'm diehard East Coast, so I like, like a good old guy, I always just go with the stuff that I know. And between Pat at Lead Sled and Danny at Zippers, that's the stuff I've been using forever. And we just get in the habit of throwing, throwing it on. Yeah. We know it's going to be solid. So 
yeah, all the old stuff has to go. You got an Allen wrench up there? What's an Allen on this other side. This side? No? Yeah, that's it. Here. I usually get out of having to work on this stuff just by talking, but that's... Uh-oh. Hey, everybody stand back. Pat's got a Yeah, no joke. Where's the JB Weld? So if this, is, if this is your first time checking out Grease and Gears Garage, you can see all of our episodes. We've been doing this for a few years now. We do them all over the country. You can check them out on uh, Cycle Source Magazine Facebook, or there's Grease and Gears Garage on YouTube. But it's... Uh, Real testament to Progressive that we're here today doing this stuff for you guys because they've taken a chance on letting us have a, a spot at the rally and set our shop up and let you guys see what we do. Where's our nippers here? Oh, yeah, we, uh, we also want to thank J&P Cycles. They've been uh, sharing our feed all weekend. That's real kind of them. They're a good, they've been a good partner of ours, and uh, hopefully here in the future they'll continue to be a nice, nice good partner for us. So we, we enjoy having that. So you can also check out our feed then at, at JMP Cycles, okay. the world's largest distributor of aftermarket motorcycle parts. We'll grab that. If anybody's got any questions, if you're sitting out here at Leesburg Bike Fest and you have a question, or if you're on Facebook, just you can ask questions. Unless it's about my weight, I prefer not to answer <laughs> weight that, questions. That one of us. Yeah, that just asked one of them. We'll tell you the truth. We're fat too. We're not letting him off the hook. Oh man, the struggle's real. I mean, I'll tell you what, how many of you guys sitting in the crowd with us today are from Leesburg? Are you? Watch me, are Listen, you? man, I go to rallies around the country. I don't know if you know how special this thing is to have a town so embraced, like your whole culture and everything. Well, I went up the street last night, was watching a band for a while, and to have the whole, like, courthouse building as the backdrop of the main stage for this rally, that's something special. Because most towns, like, they think it's a pain in the ass when the motorcycle show comes to town. You guys got good people here. <coughs> What's that? All about the money. <laughs> well, they're hiding it pretty good. <laughs> Somebody's already gotten on that booger right there. Okay, so... I love when your buddy shows up with a full gas tank. <laughs> I think that's ready to go, though. Well, you know, that drop seat, you know, Heather was just talking about the drop seat in my ear. Part of the, that drop seat, it gets you, whenever you get lower on a bike, whenever you can do that, you know, you get that center of gravity lower, and that. you're going to, ow, there, there we go. go. And we're going to be able to... Uh, Clip that line. Just clip out. There you go. Do we have a set of dikes up here? Yep. I got it. Or you got it. There we go. Um, you can get the center of gravity lower. Plus, it's easier for somebody that's got, you know, shorter legs for whatever reason. Maybe you're fat. Maybe you're short. You know, you can get down. You can get a little more flat-footed on the ground. That's short. always nice. It's also a good style. I mean, the other side of it is, I mean... Who are we kidding? You know, you do custom motorcycles because you wanted to look cool, and you get you drop that down. It looks and, cool. Hey, listen, man. I have a 1949 Panhead that I'm proud as hell of, but I'm not going to have five of them. Right. You know, this <laughs> this motorcycle here, you can, you can play around with stuff like this, and it's not going to drive you broke. Now... 
we are not going to be using most of this. Most of this. Like, we're not going to go back and use the wiring harness. But, like we said earlier, you know, she pointed out through my ear, you're going to want to uh, not throw anything away. I mean, the wiring harness you can throw away because unless you, you know, well, I, I, I keep. Hey, there might be a guy out there whose motorcycle burned up and he needs that harness. True, you might you know? need the harness. So, I mean, you hold on to stuff for a little while if you can try to sell it. But, I mean, I know I, I can't. You can't hoard everything. But uh, also, if you just need a piece of wire, sometimes it's nice to have an old harness around. So keep keep one or two. But at least shop it around with your buddies and on on Craigslist to see if somebody out there needs it before you toss it. Hey, Chris, Chris Billington is uh, on Facebook Live watching us. Says wishes could be part of the action. Come out to his show. We'll, yeah. we'll get you up on stage. And, we'll you know, that's why we'll we're doing this is to show help. people stuff. If anybody's here in Leesburg wants to come up and check this out or whatever, you know, we're trying to demystify this process. You know, some of the tools up here nobody's ever used. You know, an English wheel, you know, a heck, a chop saw. A lot of people, man, I can't tell you how many guys I've run into that are using a regular uh, carpentry saw for a chop saw trying to cut steel with it, and it's just tearing them up, you know. You just can't do it. So we're trying to demystify some of that process as well. So, But we're really fortunate in some ways and unfortunate in other ways because we're, we're super busy. we got this bike that's being built for Twisted T. It's called the T-Tracker. Uh, we got this bike going together for Progressive, and then Chris Callen, because he's so uber cool, he's also got a bike uh, that I think he's only collected parts for. <laughs> uh, he's supposed to have a complete custom motorcycle built for the Passion Built show, Michael Lichter show yeah. in Sturgis this year. So uh, you guys, you guys know about the thing that Michael Lichter does every year at the Buffalo Tip. Michael Lichter is a photographer that uh, has been around. I'm not going to tell his age. He started when he was four in the uh, 70s taking pictures. But uh, Michael is, is, is one of the preeminent motorcycle uh, community photographers. He's, in the, listen, in the last 30-plus years, 35 years, if you've seen a cool picture in Easy Riders magazine, Michael Lichter took that picture. Yeah, Michael Lichter has photographed every uh, every. Uh, custom motorcycle of worth over the last 30 years so super guy but he does a thing at the buffalo chip out in sturgis every year they give him a a, a huge building and he has a motorcycle show there that is is artistic and so it's motorcycles is art and every year he has a theme this year it's passion built it's people who don't build custom motorcycles for a living but are in the motorcycle and or do something else to make their money and then but also enjoy building motorcycles like garage builders and so Chris has been fortunate enough to be invited to do that um, this year with Michael last year it was young blood old iron and he had some uh, 30 somethings and younger builds. so it's a cool thing if you get out there to Sturgis or if you just want to get out there uh, on our YouTube page we'll cover that show it's gonna be a lot of fun Yep, Buffalo Chip, so you can just ride up there and walk right in, and you don't have to pay. It's a free exhibit. Uh, so come join us in Sturgis this year. We're going to be Greasing Gears Garage in Sturgis. It's going to be with Progressive Motorcycle Insurance at the at the old Broken Spoke yeah. site right there behind the, uh, the Iron Horse uh, downtown Sturgis. Uh, we've got a pavilion there where the uh, old Broken Spoke was before it burnt down, and we're going to be in there uh, having a good time. This thing right here. We'll be at uh, Ohio Bike Week uh, in June. We're going to be at Moto Blot in Chicago with Progressive uh, Sturgis. And then, and then we're going to be up in Laconia as well, Greasing Gears Garage. We're going to be up in Laconia this year. Exhaust bolt. And yeah, so yeah, if you're up, if you get up into Laconia, we'll be at the Laconia Roadhouse. But because we Facebook Live everything we do, you can get a yeah, flavor of all those different events. Even if you don't get a chance to break away and go ride up there with us, uh, you guys can check us out, check out what's going on at those events.
And we've got, we use, we use, the, we use dozens of, of builders and stuff. And uh, the stuff that we do on Grease and Gears Garage, a lot of it ends up uh, being tech articles in Cycle Source Magazine as well. But uh, if there's anything in particular, if you're here or if you're on Facebook Live and there's something in particular that you want to see done, uh, that you're curious about, that nobody's covered, or you just would like to have us, somebody's covered it, but you need to see it again and again and again so that you can get the rhythm down to, to do it yourself. Uh, let us know. We'll do it wow, here on dude, stage. You hear that? And then you can go back to our YouTube channel and you can rewind it and catch it all and do it that way. We were super fortunate this weekend. Uh, we had uh, Barry Wardlaw from Accurate Engineering up here, and he, he deconstructed a panhead motor for us. And as he was going through it, taking it apart, he actually was showing us, he was inspecting us, showing us the, uh, the, the kind of inspection that he goes through and telling us how you can tell what when your piston's wearing a certain way, whether it means your, your rod's bent or twisted or whether it means that, you know, what, what was going on in your motor, if it just wasn't broken in correctly or whatever. So that's in been the, In the case of my panhead motor that he was tearing apart, some dum-dum had put entirely too much too much chemical on the Chris, gasket. Chris rebuilt his panhead motor. That was the one he was doing this weekend. And it turns out the reason it didn't have longevity in it was because Chris had put a little bit too much silicone on a, on a surface that didn't need silicone and covered up an oil uh, feed hole uh, in the cylinder. And sure enough, it, it starved it for oil a little bit on that. Well, and I mean, in all fairness, I rode that bike in maybe 38 of the 50 states before five that years. that latex came loose and yeah so so five years isn't bad but yeah. Barry's gonna take it back to Dothan Alabama where he's been doing those things since the early 80s and he's gonna he's gonna put some love on it and I have a feeling man, it's gonna last a long long time when you say something like that having Barry Wardlaw take your motor back to Dothan Alabama is like having Santa Claus fix your toys yeah that's the truth <laughs> man it's uh, well, you're lucky because your wife has given you an open checkbook to have Barry do that, too, so that's super nice. She loves that motorcycle. Yeah, man, well, that's a cool bike. I'm having a hell of a time on this front exhaust bolt. Yeah, i got to just get this bolt Gil Flores, you've joined us on Facebook Live. I understand that your, uh, your shovel head transmission makes a noise. He'd like us to work on his bike. Uh... I would suggest you call uh, Burt Baker. We're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing a segment on shovel head transmission real soon if you want to follow through because that passion built bike that I got it was a donor too. I picked up a '77 shovel head and we're going to be uh, going through the whole transmission on it. You know, it's got a got a little bit of a lanky main You're shaft. Dead, and, it's turning. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it turning. Now, this is another thing, you know, I, our camera, we've got good cameras and we got a, a great Rebecca Cunningham. We haven't given her any love up here this weekend, but Rebecca Cunningham from Running, Running Rabbit Productions. If you guys have an organization or a business that needs some uh, video production stuff done, call Rebecca. Mention my name, Pat Jansen. <laughs> You'll get a 10% increase in, uh, in charge that way. It'll cost you a little more, but at least you will have she, you'll know somebody she knows, but she does, she's our production manager. She's doing all this stuff. But one of the things that we've encountered disassembling this bike, and a lot of people think, oh, it was something I did. We went to put a wrench on this half inch nut uh, that's holding the exhaust on the backside. That's a hard one to get to. Somebody had already monkeyed around with this and had rounded off some of the corners of the nut. It's wiped and so out. So now we're using, uh, Chris has opted to do it a, a way that most people wouldn't have, but he's committed now. He's got a set of vice grips on it, but really it's the only way to get it off. He's having to do it little by little. When you're disassembling a bike, yeah. you're gonna run into this kind of stuff. And I like it. I like that we do this live because we've had some of the best builders in the world on this stage. And uh, you get to see everybody makes a mistake or even if it's not a mistake, you just Things happen. Stuff happens, man. You know, it's just part of part of working on mechanical things. I love those TV shows that they show you everything going perfect, and in an hour and a half, they have a complete motorcycle. I, I mention his name all the time because he's a good friend of mine, we're, and we're real close. Evan Favaro. Yeah. Evan Favaro is a young cat. He's got more talent than he should ever have just been blessed with, but he's a he's a, got a shop speakeasy motors up in New York, 
That was and he's also, he does that 60 hours Ours a week. Ours is here, though. 70 hours a week. And he's also the lead fabricator at Orange yeah, County Choppers real, now, real which is about 30 tight. minutes from his shop. And uh, Evan gets on stage. He makes a, a fuel tank on stage out of a flat sheet of steel in an hour and a half. It's, it's frustrating to watch. But he, uh, he, he always is joking. He's like, I don't know what takes you guys so long to build a bike. We, we can build an entire bike in, uh, in an hour with 20 minutes of commercials and, uh, on OCC. But, yeah, this is real live stuff. It's always good to see people that know what they're doing have trouble because it, it makes it more real. We do always say if you're assembling, disassembling, whatever you're doing with your motorcycle, these things are designed to make us happy. Uh, that's the goal. So if you get frustrated and angry while you're working on a bike, go do something else. Just walk away. Go do something else. You know, if you're motor motorcycle, don't care if you're pissed. Yeah, if you're like Chris, you know, you're gonna go and I don't know what he, he's gonna go paint something with brushes. I'm just gonna go get my bottle of Jack. I'm gonna s sit down. Oh, we got questions. Yeah, what's up? No. RJ, this might be a good question for you, because uh, I know you do a lot with the bagger stuff. Um, he, first question is, he's putting a set of 12-inch Mayhem bars on his on his Road King Custom, and some people have told him that he needs a, 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 an extension kit for his bars, and some people have told him he doesn't. Uh, that's kind of for me in the, in the iffy zone between 12 and 14 inches. Really? So, 12 inches is right at that break point, kind of. 12 inches, 14 inches. You really do need the wire extension kit. This is the bike we're building for Progressive. Yeah. Uh, thing called the Pro Tracker. We're going to do a drop seat, keep the suspension, have a little tracker rear end, um, motocross style handlebars, mid controls. <laughs> Yeah, they threw us a curve when they said, uh, don't make it a hard Yeah, I would, that, and the reason you're getting two different answers about uh, the cable extensions and that kind of wiring extensions yeah. is because 12 inches is kind of the point where a lot of guys so will push it to. as those criteria, we're like, need oh, the we got to really think about that. Uh, it'll seem like they're a little long, but it's, it's better to have them a little long than a little short because when you go to turn those bars, it's going to pull. So you really do need to, to do the extensions. It's a little more money, but the correct way to do it is that. And as far as your air shocks go on the back, putting a regulator on it, um, are you having a problem with your shocks going down? You can do that. That's exactly what they're going to do. He's, he's talking about putting a regulator on his uh, stock air suspension and a little pump so that he doesn't have to keep checking the pressure in his stock air shocks. You can do that. That's what basically, in essence, what they do with, with air shocks anyway. And so, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I mean, it'll maintain it. Uh, well, you'd have to be very careful with that regulator. You know, with those factory air shocks, you can't just put an airline to them. you got to use those little hand pumps. You will not want to put much pressure on them because it doesn't take a whole lot to blow them out. But you could regulate it so that when it got down to a certain amount, it just kind of spit air into them. Yeah, you could totally do that. Thanks for the questions, man. Billy Grotto. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? <laughs> you put them back in the box? 
That's what I used to get when I was with Progressive as a spokesperson. Who, where's Flo? Where's Flo? No, Billy Grotto, ladies and gentlemen, he introduced Twisted T to uh, the motorcycle community years ago. Continues to travel around and do it. Uh, it looks like he's only a couple of years from retirement age, so he probably won't be doing it much longer. But now uh, Billy's been around. He's a good guy, good friend of uh, Grease and Gears Garage and Cycle Source Magazine. Uh, he he's commissioned this bike and the tw and the little twist a little twisted over there in front of Bill Dodge's booth. But he usually comes around with girls. So what I used to get when I was a spokesperson for Progressive was, where's Flo? All the time. Drove me crazy. And I made a joke one time while she was on her yacht making it rain for midgets. You know, I mean, it was like, I, but uh, Billy, all anybody asked him is, where are the girls? Where are the girls? They look right past them. He's always got the beautiful girls with him. So. All right, the exhaust came off finally. If we sometimes you like to get your hands on the guy that worked on it the last time, but unfortunately that's that's neither legal. Why I ought I I'll send you to the moon and back. Yeah, it is. You wanted? Did you have a special spot for that? You're gonna keep that, I know. See if anybody in the crowd has a Sportster or wants. Hey, does anybody have a Sportster? Anybody riding a Sportster out here? For Dinah? Do you just come here? I like the way you look. Come here. Can't care. Anybody got a Sportster? All right. No Sportster riders. Uh, tonight. Tonight. Yeah. All right. It's a it's a it's a cover. Stock cover with this uh, live to ride, ride to live thing. That kind of, I just think that kind of would be cool to kind of, you could put it on a wall or anything, you know, make a little plaque or something. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll have this up here if anybody wants to grab it. We're not going to be reusing it. So, Bill Dodge will take it back. Bill Dodge from Bling Cycles. Bill will take this back to Bling Cycles, and then we'll all feel stupid for handing it off. Because Bill will oh, take this right. and cut it and drill it and tap it and kick it and Who's spit on it and out? give it some love, and it'll be the coolest, newest, trendiest part. It looks like old Harmon. Yeah, and what what will happen is Bill will get this all done, and it'll be beautiful, yeah. and then everybody in the industry will rip it off and make it. <laughs> That's bad after. So anyway, if somebody wants this, it'll be on the edge of the stage. Okay, so we're going to move on to our... I got dirt on me. Suspension technology shocks. Uh, cool, and that thing will fall off because those screws are just, bolts are just hitting in there. Mike, Alex, and the guys from Suspension Technologies have hooked us up with this nice suspension, so we're going to get these on in the mock-up stage so that we can check out how our how our bike's sitting and what we have to do as far as the uh, the stance of it. Now, I don't know about these other three guys. I'll have to speak to it. This is the exciting part. Can you see it start coming together? Shut up, Mark. Nobody even likes you. Mark is a little angry because he played Gimli in Lord of the Rings, okay. and now that oh series God. is over. You know someday he's going to tackle you <laughs> off the front of the stage, right? Well, he might not tackle. He'll just push me because then he doesn't go off. Chris, I know your pain now. Heather just came out of the production trailer all the way around to the front of the stage and looked at me because I didn't have this in here. <laughs> she couldn't communicate with me. And if there's one thing I've heard Chris uh, hear from Heather uh, is you need to communicate. All right, Heather, I'm sorry. I, I was playing the part of Chris and I wasn't communicating with you. Ben Kudon's on, man. No, he's not. With like, what's his company, USA Prime? USA Prime Manufacturing. USA Prime Manufacturing. Ben is a ben, good friend. Ty type your type your company name in so we can tell people. Yeah, give us all your information. Ben is a legend in the motorcycle ben industry. Ben was the guy that made Primo, Primo. Yeah, right? he made Primo belt drives, what Primo belt drives is. And uh, then he's decided to uh, get a, you know, he wanted to secure his legacy. And so he built one company, but now he's going to go build another one. Ben is only, he's young, he's like 87 yeah, years old. Space, just and, uh, yeah. you know. Okay. So, American Prime Manufacturing, Inc. Right. And, uh, Ben, when are you going to have parts available for us to be able to, uh, to purchase? Let us know that. So, you can see we're interacting with Facebook Live. Say hi to Miss Trudy for me. Judy. Mama Judy. Oh, Mama Judy. Oh. Now I know who you're talking about. She's a big fan. 
She, she's our biggest fan. She really is. That's Heather's mama. So, biggest uh, critic. Heather says biggest critic. That's just you. She loves Chris. <laughs> and Heather was all worried about the first time I was meeting her, how it was going to go, but we get along good. Can you guys hear out there? Can you hear Chris's microphone? Hello. Yep. You got it. So if we can get a uh, hey. – can we get the – Come here, let me get this. Can we get the picture of the – I'm going to clip it in your beard. There. Really? Can you hear him now, Heather? Now? You're That's killing better. <laughs> you couldn't hear it before. I could. It was real soft. I want to. Can we get the picture of the uh, rendition back up on can the screen? Can we get the picture of the rendition back we up there? Take a look at it's up. Uh, oh, you guys have the shocks back off. I just want everybody to get kind of a look that we're we're almost halfway to the uh, design concept. Do you need this? Looking pretty good. We can get rid of those ridiculous handlebars. I'm not keeping this in my beard. The other, he's not going to keep it in his beard. The other wide shot is up now, Chris, so you can see the difference. It's uh, right this is going to be a cool little bike, though, man. I mean, I, we're going to be proud of this one. You know, Chris, I got on the phone with Crowd. Got, been on the phone with Progressive, right? The customer. customer, Customer's always right unless you can convince them otherwise. <laughs> so I got on the phone with Chris. One thing is, you know, right, I got I to gotta call Progressive, right? I'm talking with this cool cat there that's got the design idea in his head for what he wants is, Good friend of the program, J.P. Stacy. You know he's uh, talked with Progressive, and you know they know what they're looking for. Well, he says he wants suspension, so I call Chris. I'm going over the design with Chris on the phone, and then I got to sell Chris on the design because Chris says, <laughs> "No, man, a rigid." And yeah, we don't build suspension. And Chris says, dude. "I said, well, they wanted to be light and nimble. They wanted to handle real well, you know. So they want suspension front and back." And Chris is like, "Well, you know, my chopper's rigid, and it it handles great. It'll go through the twisties." What I wanted to say to Chris was, well, you know, well, you should probably go to work for MotoGP then because those guys might want to rigid all those race bikes, <laughs> you moron. <laughs> you know, you might see a whole different series of racing with hardtails. Hey, American there. Prime Manufacturing is going to have clutches available in about eight weeks. Nice. So we'll be looking for a set of them for a shovel head. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're going to have the whole line ready. It sounds like he didn't, right he didn't distinguish. So that'll be good. Ben, I'll tell you what, Ben is a good dude, and he's a hard worker. Ben is worker, a great so dude. I didn't figure it would take long. I mean, I'm not going to let Ben around my daughter because he's a ladies' man. Either one of them. But uh, he's like, he's like the Hugh Hefner of the motorcycle industry. What's that? Well, daddy. Daddy. <laughs> yeah, no, Ben is not ever going to call me daddy. Hey, Dad, I'm here for, wouldn't that be a disaster? Merry Christmas, Dad. Oh, man, my, my oldest daughter you. and dump truck Stroop no. were hanging out in Daytona one year. Oh, boy. And everybody started saying, man, they wanted to be a fly on the wall at Thanksgiving. And I was like, uh-uh, ain't going to happen. Old dump truck looks at me the next day and says, man, I appreciate you being all cool with it. And I'm like, what? He says, well, you like me hanging out with Amelia. And I'm like, who said I was cool about it? I don't think we even had this conversation. Uh, he's a good guy, but you always got to protect your babies. Okay. <laughs> All right, I got two daughters. One's 21, one's 25, Ben. I don't know. And so uh, they'll give you a run for the money. They're both mean as – yes, and they're, they're young enough to be your granddaughters, yes. and they are – they're mean. Nobody wants them around, man. They, they got that right from me and their mama. They, they're all mean. So – where are, we but, uh, where are we at on time, Pat? What else did he want to know? Where, I was asking where we're at on time. Oh, yeah. Matt the Wrench is, is hooking oh. up with us watching this. Matt the Wrench hey, should Matt, be here. appreciate that. He does a lot of the motor work for, uh, for Chris and Heather when they're doing stuff. All right, guys. They say we got 30 minutes on tearing down this bike. So... Huh? Oh, she said 40, not 30. I listen just like you do, apparently. <laughs> that is the truth, Heather. I can't say that on stage, though. Todd Matthews might be watching. 
I got enough of those phone calls over the last six years. All right. It's got to be I got a screwdriver up here. Flathead screwdriver. No? I know what they look like, Chris. Well, I just you don't have you know, to be. You know, <laughs> uh, I can't say that either. I was about to call you. Uh, what Heather calls you? She only says it when you're not around her because huh? she loves you. Okay. Oh, she said I could call you baby, Chris. You don't have to call me darling. You can call me baby. They left us. Did you see that, Mark? Now this is what happens in a regular shop environment. The, the, they leave. Yeah, they leave two guys to finish. The, exactly. That RJ with Cutthroat Customs. <laughs> now RJ's a good guy. He's out of West Virginia. Uh, Mark here is a eminently talented mechanic, and he doesn't do it for a living. Used to be a paint and body guy, but uh, you're a construction guy now. Oh, I did this backwards. Such an idiot. I should have left those Allen bolts in. Uh-huh. <laughs> he doesn't want to be, though. It's just because you guys make him do it. Lock him in the shop. You can make him do anything. I'm just going to put these back in. Huh? See, I just made a boo-boo. I took I took this part in a, in a bad uh, sequence. You're gonna take the eyebrow off these headlights off these Sportsters. You got to take a nut off. There's a little cap on top, and you got to take that off before you take these Allen bolts out, because you can't turn the nut with that headlight off. Let's see if that one will just hold it. I'm so strong, like two peoples. We're strong like two people. Strong like bull. Strong like bull. Smart like bull too. Oh, it's, it's done. And all this stuff's going to eBay. What's that? All this stuff's going to eBay. Yeah, because people are going to need this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff you save that guys actually can use. A lot of guys are using these eyebrows still. I'm taking it off. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, Rebecca says she needs this. Because hers is old and grody. So here you go. There you go. We'll, uh, we should send this with Bill Dodge and let him polish it up for you. Somebody dropped a really nice uh, implement of... Is this yours? No, it's Mark. I'll steal for you it that are just joining us on Facebook Live or just wandering around here, uh, we're Grease and Gears Garage. We're here uh, at, the, at the leisure of Progressive Motorcycle Insurance. He's hired us to be with them at four rallies this year. We do this all over the country, have for a couple of years. We come, we build custom motorcycles. All of us come together for Grease and Gears Garage, different shops, Flat Broke Customs, uh, uh, Sin Central Garage, uh, Cutting Edge Customs in West Virginia. I'm so used to calling RJ Shop Cutthroat cut Customs. What's that? Cutthroat Customs. Yeah, I did that. Cutthroat Customs. So. But anyway, we come together and... Uh, we're trying to demystify some of the uh, stuff that happens with custom motorcycle building. Entertain, inspire, we'll show you that you can do some of this stuff and let you in on kind of some of the secrets, some of how you use tools. Today we are uh, doing the deconstruction on the donor bike for the progressive motorcycle insurance uh, uh, build that we're doing that's kind of a flat track inspired build. Um, uh, Rebecca, if you can throw up kind of the, the rendering, this is the direction that this bike is going to be going. Uh, so we took a 2001 Sportster and we're going to make it into a custom motorcycle. Uh, we Facebook Live all of this, so you can go to our YouTube channel, Grease and Gears Garage or Cycle Source Magazine's Facebook page, and you can watch the progression of all the stuff we do. It's also a great uh, resource of information here. just for all kinds of different custom things that you you might want to try out. Uh, this weekend, we've had, we had Bill Dodge from Bling Cycles came up and shaved legs for us on this uh, by hand and showed us how we can do that right in the garage. And uh, today we're deconstructing it. We're getting rid of some stuff. We're deciding what we're going to eBay, what we're going to give to friends, and what we're just going to trash. Um, we love the idea. My shop in Iowa, Sin Central Garage, 
is our tagline is resurrecting hot rods, Harleys, and Hellions. We love to see old stuff just get given new life, you know. And so that's what we're doing with this bike, but also with parts. Uh, we've been reminded already today, one of the Ten Commandments of motorcycles, don't throw away parts. Before you get rid of every, anything that you that's think the is... first commandment. Anything that you think you're not going to use and that you don't like, there might be somebody out there that needs that. Uh, so a lot of times, like, we were, we've been giving stuff away off the stage when we say, hey, does anybody need this? And people are like, oh, yeah, we could really use that. So, like, even the wiring harness, Chris pointed out, like, I said, we're not going to use that. Uh, but Chris said, yeah, but keep it around at least for long enough so you can check to see if anybody in your area needs it. Put it up in the motorcycle section of Craigslist or something. And, uh, uh, you know, if it's something that you don't need, you didn't have any money in, if somebody needs it, give it to them. You know, you've made a new friend. Uh, you weren't going to use it anyway. It's an old wiring harness. Some of the stuff we'll put on eBay, though. Uh, just because it has value and it will continue to fund further projects and stuff. But, you know, some of the stuff just, if somebody needs it, give it to them. I got to get something to drink. I'm going dry here. That's I don't even know what I do with my cup. There it is. With this build, again, if you've just joined us, uh, we're using these two 19-inch front wheels. We're almost ready to get rid of this harness. These are nine spoke. Uh, nine, seven, and 11. Right? Yep. What's that? Nine, seven, and 11. Hey, these mags from Harley come in variations of yeah. nine, seven, and 11. <coughs> Thank you. And you Typically find what out. you're going to see on uh, Dinas and Sportsters is you're either going to see nine spoke uh, mag wheels. Two common ones are nines and 11s, right? Yeah. But you'll also see some sevens out there. It's a little more rare bird. But we're using the nines uh, really just because Chris liked the way they looked. Uh, Chris kind of leads us in this way, even if we don't want him to. It's hard to say no to Chris, so we just kind of no, go no. with his design idea. That was actually uh, that, that was guy actually right there. At the customer request. He sent the picture into the inspiration. Yeah, no, they. They, they gave us a bike, some bikes to look at for inspiration, and this, is, this was kind of the look that, that it was going for. Um, a lot of people, I get the question, a lot of people will ask, how does a bike ride with a 19-inch front wheel on the back? It's going to ride awesome. You know, it's wide enough. It's as wide as, you know, it's as wide as what motorcycle wheels are anyway. You know, you're going to get a three inch, you're going to get three inches back there. Uh, What's nice about them is, is they give you a nice, even, level look. So uh, you will have to do a little modification, you know, if you're going to, and either to, if you're going to keep your belt drive or if you're going to convert it to a chain like we'll do on this one. You know, you're going to have to do a little modification. Nothing major, nothing that a local machine shop can't uh, help you with, which I always like to point out. Uh, there's guys out there in machine shops that are making the same thousand widgets every day. Uh, go to them and let them walk through your project with you. They're going to get excited about that project. They can help you make axles. They can help you make. Uh, they can help you tap and, and re-thread uh, <coughs> wheels. Uh, they can do all kinds of stuff, and they're going to love it. And, and so you can include other people in your community and on your project. And, uh, and that just makes it more fun when other people get excited about your project. You don't have to know everything. Uh, you, you know, do have to try. But you do have to try. And you have to be smart enough to know when you get to a place where you think you're in trouble to ask the question and not be embarrassed to ask the question. That's cool. What's that? What's that? Shane Condley. Give me those names again, Heather. I'm sorry. David Schlosser and Edwin Rodriguez. Uh, it's good to have Davey you guys Schlosser, join us. Schlosser, that's Dutchman. What's that? That's Dutchman Engineering, man. Davey, Davey like, has that been Davey. behind some of the fastest, crazy-ass races. Oh, is that who that is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dutchman Engineering, okay. Is that him? Is that him? If that's you, let us know. Is that you? If that's you, let us know. Don't be hiding behind your real name. It's like Camel over there with Bling. Nobody knows. Well, Heather knows his real name now because it's on his email. I'm going to start calling him Mr. Toe. I don't care what he says. 
There's water up here and a Diet Coke for you guys. Name's John Doe. Okay, we, uh, we pretty much got the harness ready. Yes, it is Dutchman Racing. No kidding. Right, What's right. up? Thanks for joining us, buddy. That's, that knows. means a lot. Listen, here, here's this guy, right? So I, kn I, know th I know this cat personally. He gets a 30 machine in. I know like a handful of people in the country that even have a 30 machine hey, for, doing, for doing heads and valves and stuff. He gets a 30 machine in. He gets it for a week or so, and he calls the, the company up that makes it and says, hey, uh, these, these inserts, man, like they're, like you got to get more serious about your tolerances to 30. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, that's how serious he Can we just his, take the bars off crap, with all that you know? stuff on them? We could. I'm just figuring out if you strip these out. We need to. Oh, you're going to strip them anyway. All right. You keep, keep being you. I just didn't. You do didn't, you, baby. You do you, baby. I don't need to get in the middle. I See, I know better than to suggest things. I know, man. I just miss you because we didn't share a room this week. You cheated on me with Bill Dodge. Did you move us out of the house? All right, let's bring this table up and down. So Wasn't too bad, was it? We stayed at the villages here in Florida this weekend, man, and we didn't Listen have anything to do with the residents bit. there because we've heard get some this down a little bit so we can get unusual the things about the villages. Now it was nice. It was a nice house. I don't know who we rented let's it from. Bring it down to the last one. Oh, you, you can reach it now. You can, I'll hold you up. I'm going to thank Charlie. Charlie Ransom over to Walter right. for giving us a catch pan so we can get this knocked out. Charlie taking care of us even from afar. Right? That was Athena Ransom. Athena is, uh, she calls herself the Mouse House. We, she was staying at the house with us for Grease and Gears Grass. <laughs> yeah, House Mouse. Totally, uh, oh, House totally Mouse, yeah. Not the, she's not the Mouse House. That's Richard Gear. That's a completely different thing. But, uh, oh no, God. she's the House Mouse. But she folded my, she, Vagabond Choppers just joined us too, Chris. Uh now, she got to fold my underwear last night, no. and I got to throw hers in the dryer this morning. I just so, I get rid of everything. The controls. Um, there were different sizes, the though. I almost missed hers in the washing machine. <laughs> but uh, she's going to be up here a little later. Athena Ransom's yeah. going to be doing a thing for new riders, uh, lady riders. I, I don't like to separate that out, but, you know, she is a female mechanic, and she's going to be coming up talking about how you lift a bike uh, when it falls. How do you uh, maintain your bike? Uh, and, you know, basically just kind of speaking to new riders and women, just a little more basic <laughs> stuff about how you begin that relationship with your motorcycle. Women riders are the number one growing demographic in motorcycles and have been now Quite for the last time. decade. Uh, it's been the la largest demographics uh, coming into motorcycles. So, And, she, and she's going to be up here at 3.30. Eastern time. Hell, at this point, we might as That's well. That's where pull all my motor. boys out in uh, and and gals. At this point, we might as well pull them out motor. in. Uh, we still got time. Iowa, we're on Central time. It's weird. It took me two days to get here. It took me two days to get here. It'll take me four days to get home. I got family in Florida. I got my parents and my brother in Gainesville. My daughter's in Tallahassee. I shouldn't have said where she was. Ben's on here. Really? Now he knows where my daughter is. <laughs> But anyway, and uh, we'll go to uh, my youngest son's got a birthday. He's in Johnson City, Tennessee. So now it's gonna take me forever to get home. My oldest son's birthday's May third, though, and he lives in Iowa. So now I got to get back for his birthday too. It's just so if you're out there and you're young and you're thinking about having kids, don't. <laughs> I mean, I love them all. I can't put them back, but uh, you keep trying. I keep trying. <laughs> no, I got good kids. All right. So we Car Lars, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We rode this motorcycle here yesterday. Yeah, I rode this yesterday with another guy in the back of it with me. He was backwards. Was so we won't be riding this that. one back. Carlos Amador is watching us, and I wanted everybody to know that uh, he's a big fan of mine. Uh, he loves me. He, uh, he wants to be me when he grows up, <laughs> uh, which is going to be tough because 
I don't know where Carlos is from. I can never remember. Colorado. No, no, like originally because he talks funny. Yeah. He's got like – but anyway, he's never going to be an overweight, middle-aged white guy. So give up, Carl, Carlos. I got this gig. <laughs> now, Carlos is a good guy. He uh, built a beautiful bike, uh, got a lot of play this past year, uh, Ringmaster. Chris and I got a chance to kick God. Ringmaster some. Chris more than me out in Sturgis. I'm going to tell a story on Carlos now. We were kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking, kicked on the thing for 30 minutes. I started kicking on it a couple of, said, is the gas on? And it wasn't on, and Chris just said, he didn't even say anything. He just huffed him and walked away. He was so mad. So, Carlos, remember to turn the gas on. Gas and spark. Turn on the gas. Now. Talented young guy doing a lot of good work out there. What's the name of his shop? Uh, uh, Every day? Daily, Daily Drivers. Daily Driver, yeah. Daily Drivers. So. Man, I tell you, look at that thing, man. I think that, this guy, this guy rode this bike. Well, he sure as hell didn't clean it, ever. Well, yeah, maybe he didn't ride it. He just never cleaned it. That's, you know, I actually might have done that. I think it had some oil on it, and that's sand from coming in here yesterday. Don't have to worry about it rusting. No, that, it looks good, though. It's solid. That you done with that solid. oil, RJ? Uh, Got it plugged off. I don't think we have enough time to clean up an oil spill. There's still a little bit in there. Is there? In here. I was wanting to drop this line. That's kind of why I was trying to get into here. Okay. What's going on there? It should be back. We're, we're getting our lineup together. We're uh, getting our lineup together for. That's funny and not funny, haha. Getting our lineup together for Ohio Bike Week right now. Man, it's nice having extra hands around, isn't it? Uh, we're going to try to get Will Ramsey from Faith Forgotten Choppers up there. If you guys don't know Faith Forgotten Choppers, you're going to want to check him out. He, he is a, uh, you don't want to, don't ask Will a question about math. Uh, Will, Will is fastly becoming the premier frame Well, he's the, he is quickly becoming the premier frame and Springer front end builder. But Matt, he, is a, he comes from a really intellectual family. They're all doctors and, and stuff. And then there's Will. And, uh, but Will is exceptionally bright. And he, as bright as he is, he is just that boring as well. Don't so. forget he's got an actor for a brother. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he built an entire motorcycle out of titanium. When I say an entire motorcycle out of titanium, people told him you cannot build the fenders and the tank out of titanium, and he said, watch me. And he did it out of titanium. Uh, the guy is off the chain. So he's going to be with us at Ohio Bike Week. So even if you can't make it up there with us, join us on Facebook Live. You know, check that out. Uh, you're going to be at Ohio Bike Week? Oh, man, what's your name? I got the whole Steve, ready to go off. Steve, come by and see us while we're up. He's gonna, hey, Chris, he's going to be at Ohio Bike Week. Oh, right on. So, oh, well, we got great stuff up there. So, Led Sled's going to be in Ohio Bike Don Week. Don Luce, we're trying to get him up there. Try to get Donnie up there. Definitely. Uh, Daniel from Pandemonium. Daniel from Pandemonium. So, uh, but yeah, come hang out with us, man. We'll get you up on stage in Ohio. You can hang out. You can help us I work. Think, yeah, I think we're going to try to actually do. Oh, he works at Warden Cycle. Oh, right on. Oh, right on, man. Yeah, you're. We'll definitely use you. God, they've been. I mean, magazine. and by that I mean abuse. They they've been in our magazine since it was still newspaper. We were doing stuff there. Man, do you have Chris? Uh, your wife says adjust your microphone. Nobody can hear you. Um, How about now? Do you have people down here, or do you just ride down for the event? What are you doing? Oh. All right, so. So Steve just rides back up and down. That's awesome, man. Well, man, in Ohio, for sure, look us up because uh, I'm in Iowa, right outside of Des Moines, off I-80. So when people are coming through there, I got it. I'm a perfect place for people to stop and spend the spend the night. My shop's there on my property, and I got extra bedrooms and stuff. So, so when the bedrooms get full, though, you gotta gotta that either sound, sleep in the bar in the basement, or you gotta sleep in the yard. All right, this thing's really coming together. You know, one of the it's things coming to, together. <laughs> yeah, 
It's really well, coming it, together. You know, that is a weird way to look at things, though, isn't it? That's the way custom motorcycle builders look at things. Man, this thing's really coming together now that it's coming apart. So most people at this point would just be afraid they'd never ride again. But uh, now this is the exciting part for me. It, uh, this part is exciting to me. The part that I, I dislike the most is actually the last part that nobody can see. It's all the little itty-bitty, okay. you know, f tighten it up, finish it up stuff. So. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Uh, Heather's about to put that rendition up, and you're going to be right in the way. Okay, hang, to, tell to her, hang on one second. Let's get this Okay, you realize that's your wife, that. and you just said, hold on a second, right? I did. That never pans. You the man. Till I get off this stage, I am. <laughs> we got, she, and she just reminded us, you got 20 minutes before you're off stage. So if you think she'll not be mad in 20 minutes, say whatever you want. She didn't say that, but that's what I heard when she was talking in my ear. Well, I'm just wondering if we have 20 minutes, if we can get this whole motor out, because that would be awesome. That would be awesome. If we busted this thing down RJ, that far. Yeah, if RJ just do his part, you know. I mean, but I mean, you know So right. the rendition that you're seeing up there on the screen right now, for you that has just joined us, either on Facebook Live there or here at Leesburg Bike Fest, uh, we're taking this 2001 Sportster. We're going to... Uh, we've been asked by Progressive Motorcycle Insurance to build them a custom bike, and they gave us a direction to go, which is always nice, because a lot of companies, when they say, hey, we'd like you to build us a custom bike, what do you want? We really don't know. And then you're kind of left out there, you know, and you might build them something, you know, that they you just they didn't have a, a, a connection to. But anyway, they gave us a good direction to go, so we're going to build kind of a flat track inspired bike. So we've gone with the 19-inch wheels there. Uh, front and back, uh, these nice Firestone tires. Um, Chris pointed out an important thing to me. I said, "Boy, I really like those tires." And he said, "Yeah, make sure that you get the uh, uh, A and S tires." And I said, "What's A and S mean?" And he said, "I don't know, but they're the ones that make sure that you don't go all over the place." Well, it's written on the side of the tire, and he and I learned to read yesterday. It's, <laughs> it's all non-skid tires, so. We've got these cool tires. They look retro, but they're going to ride modern and really get good grip and, and keep you stable. But the rendering you can see is a drop seat thing. Chris, talk a little bit about um, where we got that idea. We, well, yeah, we're stealing an idea. Let's for sure not rip that off. Because right. Jeff Cochran, Sucker Punch Sally Motorcycles out of Ohio forever, has been making incredible motorcycle shovel heads, pans. Jeff started coming out with this thing a couple years back called the drop seat, and he's taken... Old, uh, what are they, pan, pan head seat, seat horns? Speed King Racing. Pan head seat horns in the back section here. He's leaving the suspension on instead of hardtail and stuff, and he's getting a really cool hardtail look out of the frame. It's called the drop seat. So we asked him, hey, Jeff, you do those for Sportsters because this particular build, the one criteria was has to have suspension. But anybody that works with Sportsters knows the best thing to do is to hardtail them because you get rid of that flat look, you know, and that's been – since way back the Ironhead Sportster, that was always the deal, man, was the, like the older the Sportster, the flatter that line was. So we want to do when something to get this, King, you know, finally in the evolution, the, the Harley Sportster started to get a body line. And if you could do the hardtail, it really accentuates that. But what do you do if you're going to keep the suspension? Of, we're going to try to go back and we're going to whack off these frame horns right here. And we're going to make our own to, to come up with a drop seat look. So we get that same, that, that you know, neckline coming through like that. We can keep our suspension back here, drop in a little round oil tank, and we're going to build an oil tank battery combo so that we get a little anti-gravity battery that fits in there, and we'll get rid of a bunch of space and, you know, really complement that. It'll give a nice drop-in seat with the fender coming up a little bit. And it'll carry that tracker look. <laughs> yeah, because we're really into the, uh, the chopper thing. I mean, typically, well, like, for instance, I picked these bikes up from my brother over in Gainesville, Florida. I picked this one up, and I picked up uh, another one, you know, two Sportsters that he had. And the other Sportster that he had actually had a cracked frame, but it cracked right where we would cut it off, right in front of the struts where we'd cut it off to put a, a, a hardtail on it. And it's a real common place for older Sportsters to crack if they are going to crack if you put too much weight on them. They're going to crack right here, but that's where you cut that frame, take the swing arm off, and put a, put a rigid on it. So that's normally what we do. And uh, so that one's actually going to work out really well for us later. But Progressive specifically wanted suspension on both ends. And so this is a nice way to be able to get it a little lower. And, uh, and then it's a bike that Here, anybody get can get on and ride. If you're tall, you're going to be able to ride it. But also, if you're a little shorter in stature, 
or you're fat, you know, you can get on and ride it. So, but we'll do that, and we're also going to uh, put a narrower seat on it, you know, so it's not as wide, so that you know it's just going to be a nice, sleek uh, bike with a low center of gravity. It's just going to handle really well. It's it's going to be anybody out there riding a Sportster that got a a belt with a lot of miles on the back of it. Anybody this, you all right? This one has a lot of life. This one's got there a lot go. of life back in it, man. You know how you work at a shop. You know how much that thing's worth there. We put chain. We convert everything to chains. <laughs> Except I've noticed I've got two Road Kings and. and I converted one to a chain, and this other one I got, my wife said, this, you're not touching it. I take everything apart. So this one I'm not taking apart. I, I got a 2011 road. It's the newest bike I've ever owned. And I've bought it to flip it, and now uh, she's keeping it, I guess. She's keeping it. You, congratulations, you flipped that bike real fast. Yeah, I flipped that bike right to myself. I got my, my the, before I got this one, the newest bike I had was that 97 Road King. And I've stripped it down and everything. So it does, a lot of times when I pull up, people said, wow, what did you do to that FXR? Because I don't have covers on it or anything. But it's, uh, I've never, I don't work on twin cams much either, though. No, I just, I never have owned one. I never, I, Evo's. Yeah, Evo's. We worked on a twin cam all winter. <laughs> I didn't. Well, we didn't do anything to that motor. That was uh, that was brother. Uh, I always mess up his last name. It's Fitz Fitzmaurice. Fitzmaurice. That's right. He's he uh, he's a good guy. Danny at Zippers. What's that, Steve? Now, right. isn't it? There you go. You know, my dad and I used to go round and round. I, I built my first car for my brother when I was 14, because he's two years older. It was a 69 Cougar XR7 convertible. That was my ticket to girls and beer. And so, you know, I, I wanted that car done. We were all three of us going to work on it, and then it ended up just being me. But uh, my dad and I went round and round after that about I wanted to hot rod everything, and he wanted to restore everything. Yep. And I kept telling them, Dad, they already did that once. Somebody, a designer had an idea, and then he designed a car and he turned it over to a, a boardroom who all had to have their opinions about it, who turned it over to the accountants to figure out how cheaply they could build it, and they changed it. They put it on, tried to figure out how to give it to the people to engineer it so that it could go down a production line. They changed it, and it was just a shadow of its former self at that point. And I'm convinced that when I do a car or a motorcycle, what I'm trying to do is, what did the guy really originally intend? What was he thinking? This is what he was thinking. And then some, you know, some corporate goons got in on it, and it turned into what it was. All of a sudden, it's got this big, fluffy, stupid seat. It's got these goofy handlebars. It's got not that that's what happens at Harley Davidson. Not that Harley's <laughs> ever done that, but you know, other companies. You're killing me. You're killing me here. I got people at Harley, man. Yeah, but they don't give us any money. So when they start giving me money, I'll be really super nice. <laughs> so anyway, we're. I always think that what we're really doing is we're just trying to discover. We're, free. we're freeing the soul of the. We're freeing the soul, man. <laughs> with a car or that, we're just trying to give it back that life that. It had on paper at one point, man. It never got to live. But yeah, it's starting to look flat trackery, isn't it? You see it coming together. And and the reason it did that, here's the thing, is because it's got these two 19-inch wheels on it. If it had a if we'd have put that 19 on the front or a 21 on the front and a 16 on the back, what would it look like? A bobber. Yeah. You'd start having a bobber. And so that's why, you know. This is the Corvette of the Harley line, the Sportster. Anybody out there that says it's a girl bike, you've never ridden one. These things are phenomenal. This is the longest produced drivetrain Harley Davidson's ever had because it works. And uh, so these bikes make excellent uh, fodder for customization. You can build, uh, we've got the, a little twisted over there, the Yellow Chopper by Bills. That's a Sportster drivetrain. This, is, this flat tracker is a, is a rigid, is a Sportster drivetrain. This tracker will be. They make great bikes to, to, for build well, this, platforms. This is an important time to talk about this, too. Every time we start a project, I go over this same principle. One of the things you have to do in the beginning of a build, like 
we always do the renditions like you see up on the screen. I sit down and I draw out what our idea is and we start with just a chassis drawing. We go through eventually and do a sheet metal drawing with the chassis and then we even do paint that way. But what you have to do in the beginning of a build like that is you get the idea of what that bike is going to be and you make that commitment to it and then from that point on you don't ever waver from it. Not because a part's too hard to find or too hard to figure out or you found something cheaper. You have to stick with what your design is because like you just said, you know, that thing's starting to look like a flat tracker. That's because we picked stuff to do to it to make it a flat tracker. This is going to be a flat track project, so we're working within those parameters, you know. We already know what that bike's going to look like when it's done, basically. You just got to stay on that, uh, you know. But Heather just said in my ear, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to think I'm smart. 1957 was the first year for the Sportster, and it had a, a 55 cubic inch uh, overhead valve drivetrain in it and it was revolutionary for its day oh buddy if you if you get a hold of a sports or them because you think about it harley was looking for something to be competitive with the english motorcycles because the english motorcycles were kicking their asses here's harley davidson on a big old grandpa tractor and those english bikes are, are whooping their asses so they came out you know as an extension from the k model family into the sportsters and man 57 58 sports are like you were in tall cotton if you had that money. Well, and you know, you were a slick young kid. It, not to disparage any company, because we never would. But corporations have to make decisions based on finance and sales and whatnot. But you know, when uh, I've got one, I actually bought the two Sportsters, and then I also bought a Victory at the Harley dealer in Gainesville from my brother. Uh, it's a 2001 V92C a Victory Cruiser. And uh, when Victory came out with that unit construction motor, and then it became the 100 cubic inch, they refined it a little more, and ultimately the 106 that they had. Uh, and now, you know, that was a, and they don't make Victories anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but I've always said that motor was what Harley, I felt like, should have gone to. They should have taken the Sportster concept of that unit construction got it a little further out into 50 degrees, and then and, and built that motor. Uh, I mean, so anybody also that's looking for an inexpensive bike uh, that makes a lot of good power, uh, if you can find a Victory out there, uh, my, my old lady rides a 2008 Victory Kingpin 8-Ball. It's all blacked out, beautiful bike. She's not a real big girl. She can ride that thing, and it rides beautifully. The Victory Vegases. Uh, she's a size eight. That's as big as we let them get in Iowa. That's a lie. If you go to Iowa, we got. My wife looks like a string bean in Iowa. We just moved there from Georgia. Man. All you can do there is drink and eat during the winter. Though there's nothing else to do. Work on motorcycles. <laughs> but you just lost my mic. We just lost everybody from Iowa too. Oh. Yeah. Totally. All right. That's like yesterday. So, Heather, how much time do we have left? We got to be getting close. We've got like five minutes. We're not getting a motor out of this thing, Chris. You think? Damn it. We're almost there. Hurry up. Mailman and Cheryl O'Brien are out there. They only do two things. They star in movies and watch us on Facebook Live. <laughs> and eat. And eat and drink. Yep. That's it. Everybody be quiet. Bill Dodge just approached the stage. Bill Dodge is a millionaire bike builder from Daytona Beach, Florida with Bling Cycles. He named it Bling. <laughs> because of all the Rolexes and rings that he usually wears. He was born and raised in Compton, that's the truth. So he's, he's got that blingy thing. What's that? Oh, he says the rest is a lie. Bill's just hiding his money real well. Pretty soon we won't see him anymore. He'll be sending us Instagram photos from the Caribbean. I'm convinced that if you've made a lot of money in this, in this world, you did it standing on somebody's neck. Can we neck. get this uh, sure. last bolt up here and get this harness the hell out of the way? And that'll be are those girls from the up. tattoo convention? Hey, buddy, how are you doing? We're done. Hey, girl, what is up? That's right. I used to wait. I used to wait. Hey, old man. Hey, you see your hands? You collect money with your hands, not your mouth, all right? All of it if you got it, because I need it. i got to get all the way back to Iowa. Who came up with it? I used to weigh as much as those girls, but I was a fetus. Come over to me, Bill. i got an idea for you. I don't know. You might not like it. You told me that. I said, dude, I start screaming. 
Can you get this? Oh, Conquest Customs. Scott Keatsman. I'm not doing a great job. And he can help you. Scott, uh, with Conquest down here in Florida, South Florida can help with all your victory needs. This is Bill Dodge, ladies and gentlemen. He's a legend of the motorcycle I industry. Saw my friend over there. More than that, Bill is a uh, is a great human being. Uh, we're having, we, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's a great human being. Man. Good guy. Bill's shop in Daytona is on Beach Street and was destroyed by the flood, uh, the hurricane and the floods and stuff. He lost everything. No. A testimony uh, to Bill's life is he's not a millionaire, but he's the richest man in the world because all of the tools that he got back, people would send them one at a time. His friends from around the world, he'd get an angle grinder, he'd get a power, you know, he'd get different stuff. And uh, it's because we love you, Bill. I'm a very lucky soul. You are a very lucky soul. So, And he found somebody that would uh, actually marry him and live with him, and I'm assuming sleep with him, but we've never seen that, and we really don't want to. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. Denise, he married a nurse. Which is smart for somebody that works in a shop because we hurt ourselves all the time. Okay, so we're probably probably going to end up like looking at this thing. We're probably going to end up not only cutting these frame horns off up here, we're probably going to whack these front, these rear fender uh, struts a whole way off too. But I want to wait until we actually get the motor out and start working with the frame guy to see where that goes. Yeah, the next step of this, we're going to have to wind this up because they got important music that has to happen up here. Uh, but the we're gonna. The next part of what we do now in this process is we're gonna pull the motor out, and then the rendering that we've been showing you up there is just the frame, and that's gonna now decide for us. We're gonna be able to really see the profile. That's where we're really gonna be able to start doing some math, taking a look at what this thing needs to be. We're gonna try to keep this thing even with the drop seat because a flat tracker look is that very symmetrical look side to side and very flat all the way back oh, yeah. you know so we're going to try to keep a line that basically yeah, yeah, runs yeah, through this bike we're going to have to decide whether or not you know how much of the strut or uh, how much any of the strut stays for the little flat track fender and we're going to have to do some modification up there you know, but there, right there the bike's under its own weight so that's so, how the bike will sit so proper with that, weight nice nice straight line that means we can do the exact same spring rates you know only we're going to have cartridges, but it can be this same size. We're going to stick with that as the, you know, we got a nice even plane, and that'll be the stance of the motorcycle, minus this rear section that we want to do something better with. Yeah, you can just see that there's a straight line. This one, like this bike here, you don't really have a, it's, it's not really, you know, this one's different. This one is a rigid, so the line on it's different. But with this bike, you can see it really is going to be flat. That's, that was what they asked for. We're looking for a very linear kind of design on the bike even with what the drop seat's going to happen. So. so that's about it for right now. We're going to come back. Actually, when We're going to have to have this bike finished in Sturgis, by the way, for Progressive yeah. Motorcycle Insurance. So when, uh, we've got, uh, when Athena comes up later, we'll come back up here and we'll pull the motor out too while she's doing her. All right, her we'll do that. Segment. So 3.30, Grease and Gears Garage is going to be back with Athena Ransom. She's going to be doing new riders, women's stuff, picking up the bike. She's a great mechanic. We don't give extra credit for uh, body parts. Uh, she's a great lady, but she's more than anything, she's a super motorcycle person. So be back at 3.30. Athena's going to go over just some basic motorcycle stuff, maintenance stuff, how to pick up a bike if it falls over, that kind of stuff. So Athena Ransom's right down here in front. That's why I keep pointing at that lady. Right now, if you guys And she's from Vagabond that, Choppers. If you haven't seen the show over at the Wall of Death, it sounds like the Wall of Death boys are getting ready to fire up. Some of, the best, some of the best entertainment you'll ever see at the motorcycle show. And the reason I can pick on that fellow that's taking the money is it's actually my great-grandfather. His birthday was yesterday. He's 92 years old today, so go over and give him some money. You can talk to him, but he won't be able to hear you. Uh, he's, he's deaf in both ears.